Hello, I hope that you're enjoying our video hop. Our focus this month is on designer series paper. You may have heard that starting tomorrow, Stampin' Up! has a sale 15% off on selected designer series paper. So be sure to check back with your demonstrator tomorrow to see which paper you need to add to your stash. So today I've made this little gift bag. Um, it's not massive, but it's a reasonable size and it has a pretty solid base. It's got the sort of box base, so you can fit a reasonable amount of stuff into it. So let me show you how I made it. Let's start with the products that I'm using. So my stamp sets, I've used to a wild rose because I decided to stamp on the paper. And for the sentiment, I've used a little something from the Parcels and Petals stamp set. I chose the Artistry Blooms designer series paper for the reason that it doesn't have a specific design on it. So I'm using this one, which is the other half of that one. So you get two bags out of one sheet of paper. You can stamp whatever design you like onto it. It can be for whatever reason. So change it up, put, put happy birthday on your gift tag and you can put a little birthday present in it or just because a little something is a nice sentiment. So using this paper, you can customize your bag for whatever you wanted to. And then I've used the scallop top tag punch. Okay, so there's not a lot that you need to make this. Starting with your base, I'm using Calypso Coral which is 11.1 centimeters square or 4.38 inches. We're going to score on all four sides at 1.9 centimeters or three quarters of an inch, depending on which measurements you like using. That's my scoring done. Now we're going to cut up the corners of the tabs on two sides. So up to the score line and along the score line. And the same on the opposite side. And then folding along those score lines, we'll just give them a good press just to reinforce that crease so that we get a nice shape on our box or on our base, whatever you want to call it. And then we're going to fold the tabs in and glue the box together. So I'm using Tombow here, but you can use whatever glue you like. Um, the new Stamp and Seal Plus is really good for 3D designs. It's a really strong seal. But Tombow is easy because it gives you that extra bit of wiggle room if you need to align things. Making sure that it's stuck nicely. That's our little base done. Right. Now I'm going to stamp onto my DSP. Okay, so I'm taking the first rose. So this is the outline one. So that one over there. 
which is giving you the outline of that image. And I'm just going to randomly stamp it all over. And that didn't stamp very nicely because I didn't have my stamp and pierce mat underneath. So when you're stamping with these photopolymer stamps, remember to stamp with your stamp and pierce mat because that is going to give you a much better image. And remember, it's quite acceptable to stamp off the edges. It does give you a nice effect. Okay. Then I still have some of the old tear and tape and I'm using that to finish it up. If you don't have tape, then I would be using the new Stamp and Seal Plus. And we're just going to put it along the bottom edge. And as I said that, let's decide which color we want at the top. I'm gonna to go with the purple at the top. So I'm gonna put it along this as being my bottom edge. And you want glue up one side. So it doesn't really matter which side, but we're only gluing or putting glue along one side. And then to make up the bag, I'm going to glue, well, first of all, stick the bottom edge around the bottom edge of the box. So it doesn't matter where you start on the box, but just start on the middle of one, well, roughly the middle of one edge. That's going to be the back of your box. And then going around slowly, just guide the paper around so that it's stuck all the way around that bottom edge. So giving it a good press so that your adhesive holds. And when you come to the last you're going to and this is why stamp and seal is better than tape because you don't need to worry about getting the back off you're going to this you'll have a little overlap and you're going to glue that down so Give it a good press on the inside and we can give it a little press on the sides and there's our bag okay so then to make the tag i've got a piece of cardstock that is five centimeters across by ten centimeters long or two inches by four inches and with my scallop tag topper i'm just going to push that all the way in and punch it and i have a beautiful tag ready to be decorated so going back onto my stamp and pierce mat again with this outline piece and try and Bear in mind which way you're stamping this because we're going to fill it in 
and it helps if you know what you've stamped where. So I'm sort of looking at that pointed bit there as being up at the top. So I'm just going to stamp that onto the bottom of my tag. I'm going to take my next stamp. Okay, just so that I kind of have an idea of which way I'm stamping. This layer doesn't matter that much. It's the next one that's going to be more important. But there we go. So, because I want to keep my stamping that I know which layer I've stamped where. So, I'm taking my Melon Mambo and I'm going to stamp off because I don't want it that dark. And then... I'm stamping it over my flower and my last one is going to be the piece that ordinarily you would be stamping in your lightest color there's our point that matches okay so what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to take my Calypso Coral. Now, this stamp pad isn't very inky, but I still just want to lightly stamp it off. And then I'm taking my Gorgeous Grape. And I'm taking one of my sponge daubers, and I'm just going to dab around so that I'm getting some of the the gorgeous grape onto that calypso coral and then when I stamp it I'm going to get both colors coming through so lining that up and there we go Okay, and lastly, just to finish up with the stamping, I'm going to stamp my greeting. So this one's the red rubber stamp, so I don't need the stamp and pierce mat. We don't need that extra sponginess underneath it. And there is our tag made. The next thing that I'm going to do is my handles so I've got two strips of cardstock so these are 1.3 centimeters by 21 centimeters or a half an inch by eight and a quarter and I'm just going to run my bone folder along it just to curve it slightly which is going to make it easier to put the handles on and have them looking like handles and I'm not fighting the paper so those I'm going to put on with glue dots and my glue dots are almost finished but I do have some more somewhere. Okay. So. okay, hang on, before we stick that I want to make my holes for my ribbon to go through so holding the two edges together I've got one of the retired single hole punches so it's just a matter of kind of eyeballing where I want that it's you can use anything for this you can use an old you know single hole punch or or anything okay then once we've got those on we can now attach the handles. So again, it's just a matter of looking where you want them and trying to get it roughly equal. That'll do. And then on the other side, 
again I'm putting my glue dots on but now to get them equal or in line with the ones that I've already put on what I do is I just go and I line that up there and then press my bag together and the same on this side so just putting the two together there and press and that'll get my handles on more or less equally and then what I've done is I've taken my white um, crinkle seam binding ribbon and the nice thing about this ribbon is it can become whatever color you want it to so I've taken my lengths of ribbon and all that I've done is smush it into my Calypso Coral ink pad. So yes, that is the technical term to smush. And I wanted that kind of mottled look because that goes with the DSP. So if you want it solid, you can either press it a bit more or you could color it with your blends, whichever you like. I wanted it to look a little bit mottled. This long piece, I've cut it at about 45 centimeters or 17 and a half inches. It may be too long, but we can cut it down. I'd rather cut it too long to start than too short. And I'm cutting it at an angle so that I can get the point going through the holes. So starting at the front, I'm going to, if it's not going to go through for me, I'm going to take my stamp and pierce tool and just help guide it through. And then I kind of want it to lie flat at the back, but Yeah, that might be a little bit too long but you can always cut off if you've cut it too short you can't add on and then and you'd rather be generous so that you can tie your bow because there's nothing worse than trying to tie a bow when the ribbon is too short really mind the long tails hanging down it could have been a little bit shorter but that's okay and then I'm taking my tag feeding my ribbon through I'm going to put the, t the ribbon around one of those handles and tie a knot in that my bag with my tag I think that that's sort of a pretty little present for anybody I would certainly like to get something in there um, and remember that you can do this with any DSP so you can make it for any occasion use your Christmas DSP and it's for Christmas you know if you were giving some treats for Halloween you could put your Halloween paper and put your sweets in there so any occasion any size if you wanted it longer you could make your your size longer but your 12 inch or you know, 30 centimeter designer series paper is fitting exactly around that size base so if you couldn't sort of make your base any bigger you could make it smaller but and then you could adjust the length of your DSP I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you like it, 
click to subscribe to my YouTube channel and we will see you next time. Bye.